Hi. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Are you feeling better? A little bit. It was from, a fun weekend. I went from horrible to just feeling bad. But your team won in the Super Bowl. Well, it's only my team because I'm voting against most other people. Yeah. My team didn't make it to the Super Bowl. Yeah. Where do snowmen keep their money? In snow banks. I had a couple friends that suggested that we talk about our meal planning and health and fitness stuff. But we really don't want to overwhelm people with all of our exercises and health and fitness things. So we're thinking our family vlog will mention the stuff that we're doing, um, the stuff that we're eating, uh, goals, plans, what we're working out that day. But just have it short, sweet, and to the point. And my other channel, or other couple channels, which I have my author channel, that I'm planning on starting next week and my fitness training channel will have those focus a little bit more on the fitness um, I'm thinking that the author channel will probably go through what exercises we're doing that day what our goals are and actually we're, we've been discussing our goals and we're going to compete in the bodybuilding show the International Natural Bodybuilding Association we're going through the different categories trying to decide what we want to do we're going to do a couples category so we can compete together because that's the main thing we want to do something fun together and then we're thinking about annie doing the uh the mama's category where you're recovering from having a baby losing the baby weight getting yourself back and good healthy again and then we're also thinking about possibly doing the I think it's called Quest Transformation, where you uh, promote your transformation because and that's where my book was. It was because I was a, I guess, a category two obesity, and then I said 330, 340 pounds, somewhere around there, lost 100 pounds, and started lifting weights, and, and that's what made me decide to become a trainer, is because I wanted to learn more myself and I also want to help my friends and family and and I just I love to research things so that's when I became a trainer but those are a couple ideas and we're also thinking there's a possibility maybe beach body or sports model something like that we're just we're kind of weighing the options of what we think we can do the best uh, I was just looking at a countdown calendar and we got a little over 26 weeks until the show we're thinking about doing uh, so we need to get to it hopefully I get better and I'm finished with this cold by then and I figure in a week I can have it over I'm good enough to start lifting and doing my cardio again and eating healthy and not having so many cravings by the end of the week and that'll give us 26 weeks until the show time so we'll give you a little bit here and there in the Cox Family Rocks, but just not overwhelm everybody. And then as we get started, we'll refer you to Derek A. Cox, my author YouTube channel, and I'll discuss more of the fitness related things. And then the Fit Body To Go is just going to be strictly exercise, um, exercise form, the correct ways to do it, what muscles you're working, uh, stuff like that. So that's kind of what we're doing. Um, Annie, you want to come say hello? She's over in the corner working out. So she's not sick. Hi guys. Just getting excited and trying to get down to it, the training and stuff. So. So I think this week Annie will be training, and I'll be training lightly. Just you know, I'm not going to do too much since I'm sick, but we'll do. We'll drop in a little bit of our ideas of our planning and we'll really get going on it next week which will put us at 26 weeks Yay. So you better get back to working out yep <laughs> gabriel gabe gabriel <coughs> say hi Hey.
That's your phone. Say hi. Huh? Okay, it's because it's too close. We're just editing a video and writing down for the evening. And this one is being. I don't even know how to describe it. Gabriel! We got a bath and had some dinner, huh? Is it almost bedtime? Is it bedtime almost? Do we have a long day? Do we have a long day? Do we have a long day? <laughs> He's starting the hitting. I don't know if it's going to be terrible twos or terrible ones. Gabriel. Can you say night night? Night All right. Bedtime Bible stories. Blake is here with us in spirit picture like he asked and chapter number what are we on number four now number four right here adam and eve are not happy now do you know why they are so sad it is because they have been bad they did something god told them not to do god told them they could eat anything except the fruit of one tree god told them not to eat that one kind but they could eat all the other kinds. The tree was so pretty and the fruit on it looked so nice that Eve wanted to eat it. But God said no. Then Satan, who is God's enemy, told Eve to eat it, even if God said not to. Eve took the fruit and ate some of it. Then she gave some of it to Adam and he ate it too. Now God is punishing Adam and Eve. He is sending them out of the beautiful garden and they can never come back again. Questions. Gabriel. You ready for a question? Okay. Who are these two people? Oh, okay. Where are they going? Yeah? Why can't they stay in the garden? Do you know? Yeah. Genesis 3, 8 through 13. Yep. Treasure Island, Chapter 4. The Sea Chest. I lost no time, of course, in telling my mother that I knew about the captain and his strange visitors. Some of the dead men's money, if he had any, was certainly due to us. I could not ride away to the doctors, as the captain asked me to do, since it would leave my mother unprotected and alone. Both of us were too frightened to stay in the house. The dead body on the parlor floor and the thought of the blind man hovering near and ready to return filled us with all sorts of fears. So the two of us ran out into the forestry evening, to the frosty evening, to get help from some of the villagers. When we reached the village, I felt relieved to see the yellow lights in the doors and windows. But to our disappointment, no one would return with us to the inn. After I told my story, everyone turned away in fear. The name of Captain Flint was well known to some of the people there. Several of the men had heard tales of cruelty about him and his infamous crew. After everyone declined to return with us, my mother stood up with great courage and declared that she would not lose the money that rightfully belonged to her and her fatherless son. If none of the rest of you dare, she said, Jim and I will go back. Small thanks to you, big, hulking, chicken-hearted men. We'll open that chest if we have to dig, or if we have to die doing it. Of course, I went with my mother, but my heart was thumping with fear as we set out in the cold night. We slipped along the hedges silently and swiftly but we did not see or hear anything to increase our terrors 
and soon we were safely back inside the inn. I slipped the bolt once again, and we stood and panted for a moment in the dark. We were alone with the dead captain's body. Then my mother lit a candle, and holding each other's hands, we advanced into the parlor. He lay as we had left him, on his back, with his eyes open and one arm stretched out. Draw the blinds, Jim, whispered my mother. We have to get the key off his body. It must be here somewhere. I went down on my knees at once. On the floor close to his hand, there was a little piece of paper. It was blackened on one side. This must have been the black spot. On the other side was written this short message. You have till 10 tonight. I looked up at the clock. It was almost 6. We had 4 hours. I felt in the dead man's pockets, but all I found were some coins and bits of tobacco. Perhaps it's around his neck, suggested my mother. I closed my eyes as I tore open his shirt. Sure enough, hanging on a bit of string was a small silver key. I cut the string and we hurried upstairs to open the chest. It was like any other seaman's chest on the side. The initial B was burned on the top with a hot iron and the corners were smashed and broken. We unlocked the lid and opened the chest. A strong smell of tobacco rose from inside. We unpacked the contents layer by layer. There were some clothes, pistols, a Spanish watch, a compass and many trinkets, but at the very bottom we found a bundle of papers tied in an oil cloth sack and a purse filled with gold coins. I'll show these rascals that I'm an honest woman, said my mother. I'll only take what he owed us and not a penny more. She began to count out the money from the captain's debt. It was a difficult task since the coins came from so many different countries and neither of us knew their exact worth. When we were about halfway through, I suddenly heard a sound. It was the tap, tap, tapping of the blind man's stick on the frozen road. I urged my mother to take the money and make, it fa and make a fast escape. But my mother, frightened as she was, was unwilling to take a cent more or a cent less than was rightfully due us. But when she heard the sound of the approaching footsteps, she decided to take what she had already counted. I kept the papers in the oil cloth sack and we left by the back door. We had only reached the outside of the inn when we could hear a group of men knocking at the front door. My mother and I began to run. My dear, she said, take the money and the papers and run on ahead. I am going to faint, but I won't leave her. But I wouldn't leave her. This was certainly the end of both of us, I thought. Somehow we made it to the little wooden bridge and I helped her across. As soon as she reached the other side, she collapsed in a dead faint. I managed to drag her to a spot where we could not be seen, but where we could hear everything that was going on inside the inn. The end.